Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. We've talked at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So, listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the Path of Night. Last time on Path of Night, engaging Miles in a car chase through the streets of New Haven, the followers of Set attempted to assassinate their venture enemy. Thanks to Johnny and Wynn, along with Britta's disturbing proficiency with a gun, the Setites were foiled. The Coterie managed to maintain the masquerade despite all of the mayhem, while Neil tied up loose ends with a straggler among the Setites. Wary and drenched in blood, the Coterie finally made its way to Miles' haven. So, Miles, we're going to pick up at your haven. Can you give us a quick description as to what that looks like? Yeah, it's a converted brownstone, which has basically brought the property next to it. And it's surrounded by trees and shrubs, giving it a cover from visibility uh, all around it. Uh, wrought iron fence and such to keep things out. Great. So the group of you pull in. And the quarter starts to regroup as they head in. What's it like inside? Is a very open floor plan. It's a kind of a mix of modern and antiques over the place. The dining room, the the living room, the kitchen is all visible from as soon as you enter. And all right, oh, I gotta. I always gotta give it to you, man. Your house is really nice. It's really clean, like shockingly clean. Well, you know, it's presentation is a big part of this. Before she gets inside, Wynne uh, stands outside and unlaces her boots and rolls up the cuffs of her pants just to make sure she doesn't track anything in. Do you have a shower I can run to real quick? Yes, there's appropriate showers in the basement for you. Okay. Johnny, um, Johnny you might... I mean, yeah. you guys can take turns, but... I think we all might need... Um, there's a lot of blood between all of us. Yes. Uh, Marco should be... Uh, coming along, he's been prepared, and we should be able to start getting all situated so that we can have a nice, relaxing talk. Almost on cue, you guys can hear the footfalls of an individual heading downstairs. Your retainer approaches the quarry, Miles, and it seems that the group of your friends have been through quite a night. Yeah, Marcos, we're going to need a little bit of uh, some clothes, some cleaning up. It looks like uh, we had an unfortunate meet-up with some satellites. Looks amongst the group of you. Ah, the Setites again. Yes. Very well, I'll see to this right away. So, you want to explain how you got in this bad with the Setites? Well, you guys wandering off. After showers. I mean... Or is that going to be another tomorrow night problem? No, no, we can talk about it now. It's very, very pertinent to things going on, because I feel like, based on what we just heard about Nosfrit and this particular attack... Then Nofrit. Nofrit. Sure. Whatever they want to call themselves. Johnny kind of cracks a smile. I'm sorry, but those were Sedites? Are they vampire? I mean, um, kindred like us? Yes and no. To hell, <laughs> call, call, them, call them vampires. It's fine. Just be careful because the, the older types in the Camarilla get a little bit snotty when you use those terms. You can use that word with us. Y- yeah, that's what I was going to say. You can, you, can, you can say it around us. It's fine. But you might want to get in the habit of saying kindred. Yeah. There's... It's a good habit. It's a good idea. They are a particular type of kindred that is more snake themed in a sense what do you mean by snake themed they have a particular set of powers and such that seem to be all about snake stuff they have they get snake skin they get fangs they like to do snake it's very their gaze can be it's very it's a lot they're very My, my buddy kabir explained it to me like this they come from out by egypt they worship old snake gods in the desert. It's like that. Uh, it's like that movie with uh, Schwarzenegger, you know, where the, he fights the snake god Terminator. Conan. Yeah, that one. Yep. Old ancient snake. Terminator. Demons. It's the first thing that came to mind when I was thinking of Schwarzenegger movie. I said Junior. So, but that's, that's a funnier one. One of the clans. Or is that the word you were using? It is a clan of vampires. Yes. And sometimes you'll hear people say bloodlines, families, there's all kinds of terms for it. But they are not officially part of the Camarilla. Why not? Because some of them don't like the rules that the Camarilla 
instills. They're an independent sect. So they get to not follow the rules, but they also don't really but receive the protections. They the kind same of receive way. the protections because no one wants to start shit with them. Well, I mean, we just <laughs> killed one of their sorcerers. Well, they were trying to kill us first, and like my daddy always said, when someone tries to kill you, you kill them back. Well, about that, why were they after you in particular? Well, it has come down that a particular job this group took upon ourselves ended with the death of a favorite ghoul of theirs. Um, a very strong and terrifying cat thing. We may have mistook it for being tougher than it was, and it was killed succinctly and messily. I'm sorry, I thought you said they were snakes. Yes, but that's the whole Egyptian thing. Is I care apparently they do stuff with cats. I don't really understand it and haven't had an opportunity to really question them on it since. I know this there's particular... a lot you don't remember. Do you remember any of the world's history at all? Yes. Okay. Do you remember how Egyptians worshipped cats? Yes. Think of that kind of dynamic. But the cat thing, it was a ghoul? A very old ghoul. And it may have destroyed a wall or two before we decided that it Probably needed to be put down. We, uh, by the way, when we say ghoul, we don't mean vampire. Ghouls are another kind of creature that our kind can make. Make how? Our Mortal. blood's addictive. And all you need to do is feed a little bit of that kind of drug to somebody and they get hooked like nothing else. Wait, does that mean... I'm a ghoul? No, I'm a mortal. He's, that's, somebody means a mortal, like a, a regular, a regular person. But the blood's or an animal. Or the, an animal. But the blood is powerful yeah. enough to, to um, blood bond other vampires. That's why we were so mad about that, about the prince making you drink his blood. Imagine what that can do to a mortal. That's why we call them ghouls. A mortal, a cat, any other animal, they can all be turned into a ghoul through feeding the blood. I have one. He's a fisher cat. His name is Chaps. He's really helpful. I always forget his name is Chaps. It's Chaps. Honestly, the long the longer that you live this weird unlife, you'll find that that our blood can do all kinds of crazy shit. I mean, Marcos himself is is a ghoul, mm. and this gives him some of our strengths and very little of our weaknesses. By the way, has he taken my shirt or something like that? Uh, I don't think that can be saved. Well, no, but I mean. Johnny takes off his, his leather jacket. Yeah, he will be coming. Let's not move too far from the entryway until he gets here. I don't need... I also don't think we should talk too much more about this before we've actually gotten fully in the house. Well, yeah, we're we're, we're in the entryway to the house. It's still open. But I mean, like... honestly, anywhere on the property here is generally pretty good, so long as you're not smooshing your face up against the fence. He heads How back we... with uh, a couple changes of clothes, a lot of it actually out of Miles' wardrobe. Um, which one of you is taking shower first? The three available bathrooms for it. Well, I'll uh, go first. I'm not that dirty, so you guys can. I yes. haven't had a shower in quite literally a month. Marcos, this is Britta, by the way. Um, hi. It's good to meet you. Hello, Britta. It's my very good pleasure to meet you. Is there anything else you'll need? Um, I'll probably need a shower and a change of clothes later too. But for now, I think I'd like to talk a bit more. Sounds great. I'll see you then. Johnny just unbuttons his flannel. He's got like a black, like, A shirt, undershirt. He's kind of used to this kind of dirty business happening. So prepares in advance, dark jeans. So he just kind of takes off the shirt, wipes some of the blood off of his uh, leather jacket, and kind of tosses the uh, the flannel to uh, Marco. It kind of like slaps onto him. His face becomes one of revulsion. And then he plasters on a smile and nods, and then wanders off with the bloody clothes. Oh, um, Marco, before you go... Yes? Do you happen to have gloves? Yes. I was just going to go get them. Oh, thank you. Uh, if we want to talk a little bit more before bathing and things like that, do you, do you want to just, like, throw a tarp over a couch, or do you want us to just stand <laughs> in the foyer here? Let them get cleaned up first. It's a good... Let's get a little... De-stressed out, okay. then we'll talk, because I don't particularly want all of this crap all over my house. I, okay, I get it. I just, Britta said she wanted to talk well, some more. I'm trying to find a nice middle Johnny place. pats a hand on uh, Miles' back. Don't worry, buddy. I'm sure you can afford to get a new couch. He goes striding into the common room, pulling out his cigarettes. I like that couch. Uh, Miles, is it alright if I smoke a joint in your shower? In the shower is fine. Thank you. 
Why don't you guys go do it now? We have three bathrooms. When goes Literally, down to the basement ugh. because that's where she's been told the uh, the shower is. She definitely takes advantage of the fact that this is a shower that is not cold. That there is shampoo and like body wash. If there's a loofah, she doesn't use it. Do but we even mind if a shower's cold or hot? This is a nice luxury. It makes her pretend that she's still human. Her skin gets warm. When she gets out, she'll take the surplus clothes that um, uh, Marcos has offered. Um, she kind of looks... Almost forlornly at the flannel shirt she had been wearing that's now been rended. Like, she knows she has to throw it away and she doesn't want to. From one of the rips, she manages to tear off the button front and she wraps it around her wrist and then she just kind of takes the dirty clothes and puts them in the garbage. Definitely takes her time with the joint. As Britta's walking off, or not Britta, uh, as Wynne is walking off, Neil is sort of lean over towards Britta and be like, okay, so she's going to go downstairs and smoke. Um... It doesn't actually do anything. She's kind of moving it around in her body. Uh, but, you know, get a couple of mortals high and feed off of them and you can still get high. If that's something that you're interested in. I don't know. I, I don't know you that well. Why would she do it if it doesn't work? Habit. It's relaxing. There's a mental stimulation to it in the same way same way that Johnny's smoking. And he sort of nods over towards Johnny on the couch. Mm-hmm. He's, he's not getting anything out of that. But Speak you for know. yourself. But do, mentally, do, kind of habits. Do those sorts of habits help maintain what it's like to be human? A sense of normalcy, yeah. So, hey, by the way, how many times did you get perforated back there? I got shot once. Um, Where'd you get hit? Um, she pulls aside like what's left of her shirt to find that it's like right in the rib cage. Oh, that's a good one. Sir, you might want to. If you focus on your on your midsection, to really mm-hmm. think about that. You can feel you can maybe almost push your blood that way. Britta closes her eyes and she focuses, uh, clearly not knowing exactly what she's doing, but she can feel the blood moving in her body. And as she pushes, it does actually move towards the spot. By expending a trait of blood... You can heal levels of damage on a one-for-one basis, so long as it isn't aggravated damage. So, when Britta starts to focus, it isn't long before we can kind of hear the, like, the metal sound of the bullet dropping out onto the ground as her wound is closed. Johnny goes over, snatches up the, uh, the bullet, takes a look at it. It doesn't look like it's anything weird, right? Nope. Tosses it over to Britta. Uh, souvenir for you. She catches it and looks down at it, uh, still pretty shaken by the fact that it was in her body. Uh, thank you. But these Sedites, right? Yes. They're the same sort of thing as... They're a clan, like like Ventru. Yes. What are the other clans? Oh, there's a bunch. Yeah. I mean, the, there was ones in the Camarilla. Well, let's talk about the Camarilla first yeah. and foremost. Should we just talk about ourselves? Is that... Hey, it might even be a better idea. You're so, started. Ventru. Um, we have a tendency to be in charge of many things in the areas. Their symbol is a scepter. I think you could probably imagine why. Partially because we're just some of the most organized clans. Okay, that's fair. And hey, Don't you guys have merit badges or something? We have our own structure. Our own schooling, our own learning. So he's a Ventru. I'm a Bruja. We are, uh, kind of a, in contrast to the Venture, maybe not quite as organized, but, uh, what we lack in organization, we make up for in passion. Guys like Weathers, did you meet Jane? I think there was a woman standing next to Weathers at some point, but... We rolled together kind of like, uh, more like a, more like a gang than a, a corporation like the Venture, and we, uh, tend to wear our hearts on our sleeves. And leather jackets. Is that part of the power, or...? No, it's just an aesthetic choice. I don't know. It might actually be part of the power. Oh, me. Uh, I, I looked over to Wynn, but she's not here. Um, I'm a Mulcavian. We're... I don't know. I don't know how to... Do... We're pretty normal. People say that isn't true, necessarily. A lot of people talk about Mulcavians like we're all crazy don't really trust us too much talking about organizational skills 
but um, I like to think of it like we see things that other people don't see. Given to insight and odd behavior is what people think. And it suits for people to think that. And we are the clans we are because of our sires? Because of our blood. Because of our blood, and that's why we don't know whatever I am. We don't know, but I have suspicions. What are they? I mean... She I might saw... be a bruja. She's not a bruja. What? Wynne comes back in the room, and she's towel-drying her hair. She has on, like, a men's white undershirt pair of pants that she's kind of taken a hair tie and knotted so that they fit her. Miles has surprisingly broad shoulders, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's all the shoulder pads. By, by the oh. way, we're, we were telling Britta about our bloodlines. Oh. We all went. That's your turn. So the, the name of my clan is Gangrel. Um, we are... We're wanderers. Uh, we're very in touch with nature. Very survival-based. The social scene, it's not really our thing. We are tight. As a group, we will support one another. But right now, we're... We're having some... Problems with the Camarilla. And I don't know how that's going to shake out right now. Problems like with the traditions, the, the, the laws they were talking about, or...? I don't know that I should say a whole lot about it, to be perfectly honest. Because Tell her. So there's a power structure in the Camarilla. It's... Basically, our, gro- our governing body is the, is the Justicariot. Each clan has a Justicar who speaks for their clan. The Gangrel Justicar left. Left the Camarilla. But said that any of the clan who were welcome to stay could. There aren't many of us who made the choice to stay. A lot of us left to help Xavier. Um, Why did you say? Neil kind of positions himself so that he's directly between Miles and uh, Johnny and kind of waves a hand at the three of them together. That. Oh. I have been alone for a long time. And that's not uncommon for my clan. As I said, we're not overly social, but the people that we choose, we stand by. So, characteristics like that, like you not being overly social, or Neil appearing and disappearing, those things are normal? They are consistent with the blood that we have. My blood is much happier and better suited towards fighting, speaking with animals, and... Yeah, it's a neat trick. And That's what I can teach you. Well, something like my senses being on overdrive, that hearing things really well, that might have something to do with my bloodline. There's some crossover in the Venn diagram, yeah. Mm. Crossover in the Venn diagram, what does that, some of you share powers? Mm -hmm. Some of us? It's why I recognize the way you were looking around that room. We can talk about it at some point, but the, the ability to hear like that, to sharpen your senses, it's something I'm familiar with. A well, lot of Malkavians can do it. Can't we talk about it now if there's... Yeah, I'm uh, sure. I don't know what I am. I don't know how to use any of it, and it seems like we'll need to. Well, chances are we could probably figure it out. Considering the fact that you were embraced, made, made a vampire here in New Haven, kind of limits some of the clans. I couldn't be... A setite. Well, based on what you've could, shown us, but you're probably not. Yeah. Like I said, I've I've got my suspicions. I, I assume based on the way Miles was looking earlier, he's got he's got some too. Based on what you've said, and based on how you were moving in the car. Oh, did she? What was she doing in the car? The uh, the point is, the uh, there's not too fast. many other clans that belong to the Camarilla, uh-huh. and when another clan moves in on a city, it becomes pretty clear that they're around. So really, the the other clans that we have to, to look at are the Nosferatu. Which you're not and, a Nosferatu. Which you're not. You ain't one of them. Nosferatu, Nosferatu. Yeah. Yeah. Shark face? Yeah. They all look like that. Well, not just like him. There's but. something that happens to each clan. It's sort of the price of 
the power of our blood. A is, curse. Okay, we can call it a curse. I mean, it's a good way to put it. That seems makes it seem like it's unworkable, but that's just me. My clan, we... All right, so if I ever get too low on blood, I can enter a frenzy. Every vampire can. When I frenzy, I take on animal forms. So eventually, I'm not going to look like me anymore. You don't think she was born with those beautiful little uh, blue-green eyes of hers, do you? No. We can talk more about the curses, but let's focus on the rest of the clans first. Yeah. Okay. So aside from the Nosferatu, there's the Tremere. Mm Mm-hmm. That's Reese. Yeah. The Tremere focus on blood magic. Wynne looks like she is distinctly angered by the knowledge of this man existing. It seems as though each bloodline has their own powers, but the Tremere focus on unlocking all of the potential of the, of what their blood can do in weird ways. I don't particularly like to think about it too much, but... Uh, Sorcery. That. They have their own structure, too, so they have an internal structure to themselves. But because of what we're seeing you do, I don't think you're Tremere either. Not if it's true and Miles said you moved real fast when you were in that car. Yeah, I I don't think I've ever done that before. Also, she apparently knows how to fire a gun. Well, the other clan that we, uh, that we didn't mention are the Toreador. Remember, uh, remember Elsa Linden? Yes. That's, uh, that's clan Toreador. They, um... They kind of sit in between all the rest of the clans. They uh, they almost act like a nice bit of glue. Keep the Camarilla functioning, and they they kind of temper all of the tempers of all of the clans. Well, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, but they're insufferable in their own ways. They're... They see the beauty of creation. And Johnny rolls just... his eyes a little bit. They see oh, themselves... Please. They can also see the beauty in themselves. They have a thing about aesthetic. Yeah. Like, the same way the Sedites have a thing about snakes, or... Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good... Sedites do snakes. I've yeah. heard stories about old toyed or locking themselves away in castles or mansions with piles of art just going crazy, collecting massive amounts of paintings or sculpture, and they just sit around, withering away to nothing, looking at it. Wait, art specifically? Well, All kinds of art. Sometimes. I've heard even even crazier stories about weird kinds of art that Toreador get obsessed with. Well, when like I was dance. at the um, Elysium, Skin. right? Uh-huh. I saw a painting and there was something really... I mean, it was gorgeous. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before in my life. I wanted to keep staring at it, but we yeah. had something to be... Does that sound... I was going to say, I think there's something to be said that, you know, your senses are heightened in a similar manner to mine. If what Miles says is true, you can move as fast as Johnny can. And the first time I ever saw you, you were staring wide-eyed with wonder at a piece of modern art. Didn't something similar happen to that kid Romeo a few years back? Yep, last year. Yeah. Was it just last year? It was like a year ago. Ugh. I don't know if we ever got confirmation of what clan he believes he is. He's oh, it's, Toreador. Yeah. That's why he's hanging around with Lyndon so much. Did she take accounting on him? I can't I remember. believe she took responsibility. Yeah. So then, yeah. So I might be a Toreador. It's a good guess. Oh, well, you, you, might be, you might be Romeo's broodmate, for all we know. I mean, two young, teenage, early 20s. Good-looking people suddenly getting snatched off the street, turning, you know, embraced as Toreador and let loose. Does he have any recollection of who he was or the events leading up to his embrace? I don't know. Romeo doesn't talk to me too much. Well, was he brought in in the same way that I was, without a known yes. sire? Yeah, he was just found. If that's the you. case, I bet you anything else Linda knows more about this than she was letting on. Probably. I mean, we use we use Weather's connections to, to get information from her. But it'd be just like her to be using us like that. And well, using weathers. Who is his sire that must have been discovered at some point, no? Not necessarily. Once the accounting happens and somebody's taking responsibility, they care a little bit less. As long as they don't screw up. Also, some of these folks think on a really long timeline. 
Uh, Apologies for interrupting. Uh, Miss Britta, did you want that shower? Um, yes, please. Uh, if you all don't mind. No, That's go fine. ahead. Please, right this way. Thank you, Marco. Britta, was it? Um, yes. Marcos kind of mentions while the two of you are headed towards the bath that is prepared for you. Apologies for my forwardness, but I overheard a bit of a discussion about the blood pond. Um, yes, the prince had me drink from him. I see. Well, I admit I have um, an admittedly unusual relationship with the blood pond. What's unusual about it? Miles has granted me immortality. I will never age so long as his his vitae remains in my blood. So you chose this? Um, I'm sorry if that's too personal. I choose this. Is it a choice that I must make continuously? However, there is um, there is a loyalty that it instills into those who drink. You see. The blood bond is not something that can be created in a single night. This is a a process. On the first night, you drink, and you will find that you think of this individual more frequently. Bring them up in conversations, become curious to find yourself in places that you think they might travel through. I did seem... It felt more like he was trying to protect me or bring me in after. Yes. That's not real? No. Oh. No, if this man sought to blood bond you and hadn't bothered to tell you what that even entails, I imagine this individual was a predator seeking to take advantage of you. You see, because on the second night, it creates a sense of loyalty. You will seek to help him. His desires will become your desires. You will aim to please him. And on the third night, You are bound, a slave to his blood. Um, if you don't mind me asking this, which are you? I am bound to Miles. Fully? Yes. Is it, you said you choose this, reversible? Not that I know of, but as I understand it, or have come to believe, this is the first step towards becoming... One of the kindred. If I perform well, if I am loyal, perhaps Miles will one night find me worthy. And ask for the right of creation? Similar, yes. Progeny. Progeny. Right. I'm sorry. No need to apologize to me. I just work here. But yes, if, if I prove worthy, he may seek permission from the prince... To make me one of the venture like he is. And I will go from being a slave, a servant, to a king. He opens the door to the bathroom. And can kind of like see this 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 bath that he ran for you. Very carefully prepared. And there's a towel. And there's, there's clothing. And there's like a little scented candle. It looks like he went through uh, a bit of extra effort to help comfort you. Perhaps he is noticing that you look stressed. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm happy to help. She'll go in. Um, what clothing has been left for her? It's not exactly the height of fashion. It's mm-hmm. like gym clothes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's clean. That's you know, all it's she folded. wants. It's folded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to give what you need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, he excuses himself, of course, and shuts mm-hmm. the door behind him. And for a time, you are left alone to contemplate your new reality. While well, Britta's in the bath, um, the hot water, she takes a moment to try to heat up her hands to see if she can make them feel normal again. You find that when focusing on it, the blood stirs just like it did when you were uh, healing yourself from that, that bullet wound. And in time... Your skin becomes flush and warm, and it starts to regain some of the, um, the the tan, if you will, that I had. Even the touch of frost? That never quite goes away. Mm. 
but the color, like, you become more flush and alive looking. Well, after a moment of frustration trying to get her hands to resemble the blush of health on the rest of her, she'll bathe and she'll change and she'll come back down. I mean, this process takes quite a while, Mm -hmm. uh, but when it's done, you tiptoe back downstairs and Marcos is already waiting by the staircase to kind of lead you down. He's actually, uh, he's very subservient and unthreatening, kind of like an unobtrusive posture while he guides you along. Mm -hmm. And you return to the coterie. Feel better? I definitely feel better, yes. Good. I I move over towards Marcus. I'm like, I think I'm going to need some of the local musicians called up. Be paid. It was an exciting night. Ah, I see. I'll make preparations right away. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Marcus. Of course. We're he goes going and he to... wanders off. A little pep in his steps because, you know, Miles asked him to do something. Johnny's uh, sitting actually on a, a side chair by one of the windows. It's cracked open and he's taking drags off his cigarette and flicking it out the window. He's actually already changed into a pair of kind of ill fitting jeans. And uh, a, a white shirt that look like they're probably from some label that doesn't really like fit him. <laughs> like, like it if might. They, like, if they knew they were on him, it, they'd be a little disappointed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my shredded shirt is gone, and I am now wearing a, a shirt similar to the one he's wearing, but it fits me very well. <laughs> <laughs> I also picture him in a smoking jacket, but <laughs> it's a little off brand. <laughs> But, like, basically a a white shirt that's got, you know, a couple buttons undone and then... Look at you, kid. Very casual. Shower did you well. Looks like you're almost alive. (laughs) I, um... I don't know if I feel alive's the right word for it, but... No, uh, it's it's definitely not the right word, but... (laughs) Yeah, Um, close enough. We're listening to music later? Oh. Ooh. Uh, Miles, you want to take this one? She's into your accounting. (laughs) Yes. Um, To be fair, yes, we'll probably listen to some music, because that is what we'll pay them for. Um, But at the same time, I use my particular influence to make feeding for myself easier. Oh. Uh, That's been explained, right? Feeding, which part of it? How often we need to do it? I'm not sure. Drinking blood from people? Um, I kind of figured out that part on my own but how how often how much how do we make sure we don't kill them that takes practice a little Man, bit what did you explain to her when you were in that side room anything i had time to assess the situation to see if she could be saved far be it from me i've never taken anyone through my accounting but but damn we got a lot to explain huh right well if she wasn't going to make it through the night it wasn't so kind to, of worth it to explain feeding at that to point. Answer Johnny raises part up a of hand to kind of be like, yeah, fair enough. To answer part of that, you kind of have to gauge yourself and how hungry you are. If you don't use much, you're not going to need to eat as much. You'll have to use at least a little bit to yep. rouse yourself every night. Yep. Every time that you focus your blood somewhere, that's going to be using a little bit of it. That gut bullet wound. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that blush in your cheeks. I think that's. She's also been brand there. new. That might be. Shine hasn't Maybe. worn off yet. Possible. Every time, every time that you move quickly, and there are people that never lose it. True. There's also all great. these things could be uh, draining you of vitae. But the reason that you found me was that I was hunting wrong. That I was getting caught. That How was your we... first time. Everyone's first time starts with a frenzy. And depending on the circumstances, Often. people, they put them in better situations. Yeah. They're, they're controllable. It doesn't always lead to death in the first time. No. Beyond that, though, just moving forward, uh, it's better to take a little bit from a lot than a lot from one. The Camarilla likes to make it so that it's not so traumatic, but honestly, I think a embrace tends to be more towards the norm like you had, kid. And there are things to it. As you're counting, I will start a guide and then we'll see if a particular way fits you or not. But there are a couple things that we're predators. And we have a couple things to help us 
make pe- make it better for our prey and make us less detectable. So you don't have to kill the musicians. I try not to very often. I like the musicians and their music. It's kind of my job. The Camarilla <laughs> frowns on creating too much public notice of us. So that means that if we kill people, that's going to bring attention for the most part. You fed. Yeah. The first time, yeah, but also off the prints. And I, I know we were talking about blood bonds and things, but do you remember, and I know it's different, but do you remember how it felt when you were feeding off the prints? Good, oh, right? Yeah. It's really okay to say good. it. We're all... We've done it before. Well, not that, but... That's, unless something's gone horribly wrong, what it feels like for a mortal. Wait, it feels good. Why wouldn't it be painful? It's, um, yeah, I don't know what it is about it. You know, I'm sure you could talk to some Tremere and they'd know, or all sorts of armchair philosophers, but, yeah, once you're in, now, how you get in can... That can spark a lot of trauma, but once you're there, it feels good. It's kind of like a poison, some say. Some is spiritual or magical, but basically... My buddy Kabir put it like this. When a kindred feeds on a mortal, it's like a lover's embrace. They just want to be there. They want you to drink their blood. And And you will do it differently, like you would use, you said, your influence to call up musicians. I that... use my influence to make my job a lot easier. Mm, Everybody that's... hunts a little different. That's also mm. something the Toreador are good at is because they're artists, they can develop a following. Also, I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, because they're generally kind of hot, it's a little bit easier to get somebody to, you know, come into a dark alley or whatever. But it's Fair. also a pretty good judge of character. Yes. You watch how somebody feeds, tells you a lot about the person. Because the fact that we can make it pleasant and not have to kill somebody, well, not all of our kind like it that way. Some of them like to make it messy. Well, to the end, we're still people to certain degrees, and there are some people out there who just like to cause pain. The people who do that aren't people anymore. Is there a particular clan that does that? None in the Camarilla. Sedites? No, not the Sedites. I think it's more like an individual choice. Yes. Yeah. There's no particular clan that embraces just causing Johnny. Johnny has pain. a really hard stare for a bit. The Sabbat like it messy. The Sabbat? The Camarilla are one society of kindred. The other society that are jealous of what the Camarilla has of the Sabbat. They tend to be the worst of our kind. Yeah, but generally just like little nomadic packs and things. You know, groups of zealous psychopaths. You don't know them like I do. No, no, I know. I'm just talking about generalities. But they're not a clan. They're not like... It's not like the Sedites and the Sabbat. No. No. They are made of multiple clans, much like the Camarilla. Some different ones than exist in the Camarilla. Yeah, I, I don't know a whole lot about the Sabbat. That's Johnny knows more than we do. Do they have traditions like the Camarilla? Probably. They have to have things to keep them together. Otherwise, it'd be pure anarchy. Which is also a thing. They're more like a cult. A cult? Yeah. I don't know their particular beliefs, but they have a fascination with who they are as monsters. I can tell you more about it. I don't know if you need to be scared about them right now. And there's also, but ask, knowing too much about them is sometimes problematic. But if, but if you're curious, kid, ask away. I won't hold back. Would I know one if I saw them? Oh, yeah. How? They don't revel in remembering that they were once human. They take all of the gifts that make them monster, and they accentuate them. How do they get by without showing our existence? Sometimes they just don't care about that. And if there are any survivors, nobody knows they were there. Just a massacre. And you've had to deal with them? 
Yeah. It was a tough embrace for me. A run-in with the Sabbat that went sideways. I'm sorry to hear that. That's all right. Do they have anything to do with... You said that they revel in their monstrous nature. Do they make other things monstrous? I have a feeling that there might be some connection with that thing in Wynn's fridge. I agree. Um, That's a much longer talk. You had other questions about who you are. Let's let's build this castle on uh, stone instead of sand. That's a good point. Speaking of who you are, you still don't remember anything? I was hoping that it might come back in bits and pieces, but really, all that's come back so far is my name. She might recover some after her first sleep. She might, but she also, if she doesn't... You know, I wasn't just reading newspaper newspaper listings to check out the funnies. I Uh, never think you do. You found something? Maybe. You might want to read the funnies once in a while. It might help lighten you up a bit. Marmaduke is just too big. (laughs) Um... Yeah, th- th- there is, um, you know what I was talking about. You can sort of see things. It's just more about being observational. There's a place, an old, an old cafe that shut down a while ago, and somebody, matching your very distri- description, purchased the deed to the property. Uh, when? Not too long ago. How exactly did you figure this out? You know, you look at the, uh, the, the real estate listings and, uh, you know, small town news. Plus, just, you know, like I said, she's a Capricorn. Johnny gives you a very puzzled look like, yeah, right, dude. And continues smoking his cigarette. And so, all- so, anyways, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's more about, uh, yeah, we've got, I, I talked to Miles a little bit about it, but mm-hmm. we'll, uh, if we just pull some property deeds, maybe send somebody over to the, uh, building and uh, department. Well, Neil, that's incredible. Did you get anything? Like, my last name or a birthday or... No, 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 sorry. No, just just that. Just that you, definitely you, probably. Uh, Definitely, probably. There's no such thing as definites. Got it. Well... You did find that she's a Capricorn, though, and that does give a range of birthdays. I think that was... But it's based on her embrace. Yeah. Right now is Capricorn oh. time. Yeah. Wait, vampire I've got birthday. Two birth. Oh. You're in a sense, yes. In a sense, kinda. Regardless, something about this cafe. Is there anything that stood out about it? Anything important? Like anything? It's a nice property. We haven't really it's definitely a nice property. But again, it's been a busy night. We're gonna have to do a little bit of digging. Um, send somebody over to building records and hopefully pull a name off a deed. And maybe tomorrow night or sometime soon, we can just take an amble by. It, worst comes to worst, somebody sees you and goes, oh, hey, Britta, what's her face? It might not be the best of things, but... Also something I was going to bring up. Millie may not want to do that. For all intents and purposes, you're dead. Another thought, kid. You don't know your last name right now, but um, in some, some vampires take this opportunity to remake themselves. If we don't find out who you are, you can at least decide who you want to be I'm um it's hard to figure out where to go when I don't know where I've been and right now all I really know is that I don't want to be what I started off as I get that I want to figure out how to how to feed without killing or how to move forward in the Camarilla with without breaking these traditions I that I don't even know what the rest of them are. What else should I know when... So the rest of the traditions, my dear prince in his domain, that's the acronym for how you remember them, or how I do anyway. First one is the masquerade. We don't let the people that we used to be know what we've become or that we exist at all. Or that there are strange things in the night. Because that leads to questions. Theoretically, yes. What other creepy things do in the night? There's only so much we can do about that. If we can cover it, we do. That's why I shoved the thing in my fridge. Yes, and there are many different kindred out there working to keep a lot of this under wraps to varying degrees. What other creatures are there? You were dealing with something... Take your pick, kid. 
There's so. all kinds of weird shit out there on the road. So tonight, I wasn't going to come to the party anyway, because fuck a whole lot of that. Um, Elysium politics, you've seen. Not my shtick. The, what I, okay, so the part about becoming kindred for me that was easy to accept was that there were other monsters out there, because I have seen monsters and things my entire life. I have a fairly working relationship with creatures called wraiths. What is it that you think a wraith is? It sounds... I feel like I've heard of something like a ghost. That's more or less it. It's a the spirit of a dead person who is lingering, having trouble moving on. Usually there's their death was traumatic, or they had a strong tie to someone here. But either way, they can't move along. And so sometimes people like me who can see spirits and ghosts and other invisible things, they'll reach out to us, we'll work together. But I met a little boy tonight named Joey. His face was all torn off and he had run away from home. And some terrible creature had chased him through the woods and killed him. He didn't know he was dead yet. But he knew that um, people couldn't see him and he wanted to say goodbye to his mom. Weren't you interacting with him during the Alicia? Yes. Because there are some fuckers, some outright monsters in the Camarilla 2 who will imprison wraiths and use them. And they will take these little lost children and they will use them. When? Tonight's... Maybe, uh, bring it down a peg. Neil walks over and, like, puts a calming hand on Wynn's shoulder. I'm sorry. I, um... You don't gotta be sorry. No. You... I've, I've been there myself. I get it. I don't want to be one of the monsters she sees when she looks at me, though. You're okay. I don't think you're a monster. I appreciate that, kiddo. But yeah, there's, um, there's a few active wraiths in the area. Um, Joey was new. Um, there's another member of my clan who um, left left the Camarilla. She works as an independent now. Um, she probably knows more about all this. Um, we should talk to her eventually. Okay. In um, terms of other monsters, Elsa Linden was, was chased out of her domain by werewolves. She used to be a prince. Yeah. Werewolves, like, like in the movies. Way worse. Yeah. Lupines, generally, is how they're referred to. Werewolves is just easier to, much like the term vampires. All sorts of stuff out there. So my my clan can take on werewolf lupine esque tendencies, but these are actual shape changers. But the dead boy, the one that you were in track, the wraith, Joey, yes. What kind of person... Is it a clan that takes advantage of wraiths, or...? You yeah. have to be able to see them, so mm-hmm. that can strike anywhere. I've heard, I've heard there are families that are specialized in that sort of thing. There yeah. are magics out there that can bind wraiths, sorceries that can bend them to your will. Who in the court? The Seneschal, Reese, had him bound to him. There may be others, but that's the one we're aware of. Not a lot of Tremere in the area. And are werewolves a current problem? Not in New Haven. Thankfully not. (laughs) Only for Elise. Something you should probably know, though. Don't leave the city. Don't go on a road trip. Don't even really get too far out into the suburbs. Is that part of the tra- traditions? No, it's just a really good tip not to die. If you need oh. to go somewhere, I know some of the safe routes to get to get people around between the cities. Johnny's like what? magic when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. He can just get you place to place. The world has become a very dangerous place. Pretty much there's all kinds of things that you can think of. Monsters under the bed. It's probably something out there that does that. I saw a UFO once. Well, now we're just being ridiculous. If you say so. Well back to the traditions. There was the masquerade yep. and... Domain. Domain. 
So technically, this is Miles' turf. Without his permission, feeding around here, think of it like poaching. It's uh, it's kind of a no no. This is his domain. Yes, I'm... his domain within the domain. I know there's a lot of I cross get... nomenclature. Yeah, I get a little area that I was designated to be mine, and I feeding rights are mine in that area. But he has that because the prince said, "You, this is my area. I now gift it to you." The entire domain of New Haven belongs to the prince. Mm-hmm. He and the Primogen Castle kind of divvy up feeding grounds and things like that. But this, this is Miles. So you all have domains in the domain? No, no, no. Some of us aren't that cool. Some of us have to make do where we can. There are areas that are much more open. And then there are places outside the city to a certain degree that allow for other people to feed. Like the rack. Mm-hmm. Anything else in the traditions that I need to know? Oh, yes. Don't make other vampires. You, you, I think you've, we've nailed that one home for you. Yeah, tonight. that one should be pretty obvious for you, I think. But you can't make kindred without the prince's permission. Mm. If we're going by the old traditions, the vampire that makes another vampire and the vampire was made usually are both put to death. That's Final death. That's why Johnny and Miles were so vested in trying to keep you alive. And then on top of that, not oh. killing other vampires. It's the, it's the flip side of don't yeah. make them, is don't kill them. Mm-hmm. Not without specific permission again, or if there is... That's the right of destruction. We, right. we got a little bit of a pass today because technically, you know how we were talking about how Setites aren't actually in the Camarilla? And not the Sabbat, they're something else. The traditions apply to the Camarilla. Mm. Technically the domain thing, if someone is found wandering in another prince's domain, they are not necessarily obligated to keep them alive for questioning. Yeah. It's good policy because you never know who you're going to piss off, but... You want to go ask for hospitality yeah. things like that. Uh, and that's why you shouldn't leave this domain, is because you don't know yet whose domain you're walking into and you haven't called ahead to make reservations and make sure that your bidet is ready or whatever it is the harpies actually do. Yeah, um, but yeah. If someone like Miles were to wander around, he might be in a little bit better shape because he's he pulls some water in New Haven, so other princes might be unwilling to touch him. Somebody like, like you? Yeah. You're barely being tolerated here. I think they'd have free reign to uh pick you apart elsewhere. Yeah. To be fair, we'll be teaching you this and then in the end you'll be able to know who to contact or even in this domain or another one to you want to get from one domain to another. You don't have to get everything out today. Right. Mm-hmm. But there are courtesies and niceties and such that can be... Right now, let's stick to, stick to New Haven. Mm. Um, and to the creatures and traditions that I need to know about. Is that all of the traditions? Um, my dear prince in his domain and is for accounting. You know what that is. Yes. Um, his hospitality. Somewhat like toleration. Yeah. You see, a good example. I made a pretty decent name for myself being able to travel between domains. And the thing you really got to keep in mind about that is that a domain, it's not just feeding territory. It's The prince is like a medieval prince. Their rules go. If they decide that the whole domain wears red on Saturdays, that's his law. You wear red on Saturdays. But when you reach a domain, you can ask for hospitality. And it is tradition that that is given to outsiders. It's not always, which is why you want to be careful. And it helps to pull some weight. But hospitality is respected. And once it's given... It is not broken unless the person breaks that trust first. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. I think I only have a couple more questions that I know to ask right now. Um, Feel free. The first being, you mentioned the weird skinless beasts before when? Yeah. What are they? I haven't the, seen it. But... There are... We mentioned the Sabbat and how there are clans there that don't exist. Yes. Some of them are what we call Zemitsi. And what they can do is work flesh like a sculptor would work 
clay. And they're the kind that would embrace monstrosity trying to make themselves... They might embrace a human and turn them into a monstrosity. They might embrace an animal or ghoulify like, an animal. Like I said, I, I haven't seen this one that you've got, but I have... I've been close to a Zemitsi before and the things that they make. They have all kinds of weird names for them, but they... they treat them like hunting dogs or hounds. Create all kinds of monstrosities that they use for all kinds of things. Making war, hunting, sometimes just for fun. Shock factor. Does that mean they're coming if Wynn found one? So theoretically, there it's something to consider because I hope not. I hope not too, but the animals in East Rock Park are it's very close and it's not a good sign. I know. They they're frightened, they're quiet, and I found the one I found one stuck in a pit trap, so that means someone knows enough about them that they're making traps for escaped ones. And then there's the one that's in my fridge. Which is dead? Both of them are dead. Completely? As far as I can tell. Neil kind of frowns and starts chewing on his lower lip and thought, What killed the other one? It fell into a, basically a tiger trap. It was a spike pit. There's two. So you have two in your fridge? I have one in my fridge. Wait, who put a spike pit in the middle of the park? That's what I would like to know. Because I think someone is consciously making them. Hmm. The same uh, person trying to trap them as a... As who would be making them? Or they escape and he wants to have a plan B. How ill-timed. We really need to to take a look at this thing. We do. I don't know if we have time tonight. I am going to go back to my house tonight, and I'm going to stop by the tiger trap and see if it's still there. I guess. If it's still there, I'm going to grab that one too and put it in the fridge with the other one. There's not a lot of time. If if there's a Zanitsi making things out there... That means that we have a whole pack of Sabbat. I, I understand. We don't have a lone Zemitsi. But we also Does have this problem with daylight, and that is coming. Raven, my former primogen, has a lead on some of this. We're going to need to talk to her because she is aware of some folks in the area who may be up to some of this. Oh, well, if you can make any phone calls you wish from here, but... Oh, Raven... I just do not recommend it at this point. I don't know if there's more setites running around, and right. we just don't have a lot of time before dawn. Miles is right. We've she's set- she's low on blood. Hell, I'm low on blood. Yep. The setites are probably all in a tizzy. We can't afford to just be tromping around. We really, we really should just stick it out here for the night. Don't hide in the sewers. Sewers. Neil Beth. sort of like looks up as if he had just had a thought. Uh, yeah, it, we were talking before about. Um, monsters in New Haven. Mm-hmm. Uh, sewers are Shaw's territory, and I'm welcome down there. They like me, but uh, he wasn't joking about gators. The gators are. Do they have anything to do with the jihad he was mentioning? Jihad is. Oh man, that'd be funny. Different. <laughs> jihad is the political game of vampires, which is much longer than the one most humans deal with. It is. Stretches centuries, and everyone is a piece. By looking Shaw in the eye today and saying, yeah, I, I'm going to play the game, and I'm going to accept it. It, it, it's sort of a... I, I don't know how much you, you... You know, I don't want to oversell it, and Miles isn't going to oversell himself, but uh, he stuck his neck out real hard today to make sure that you were okay. I it's really an opening move. It. He didn't stick his neck out at all. He he looked Shaw in the eye and said, "I'm going to play the game." Oh, I th- I thought you meant Shaw. No, Shaw played. did. No, no, I'm Miles about, did. no, I'm talking about Miles. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know, man. You get really up like close up with Shaw a lot. I don't know. They all chill no. with me. They, they they like me. But you're a likable guy. It I, means that I did their clan a favor. Neil, what game did I agree to play? You didn't agree to play anything. It's yeah. the stupidest Miles. game Are you sure of power. About that? Well, Shaw looked back at Miles and said, "We all play, and if you're part of the code, yet again, I've taken responsibility for something." Is this game important? Yes and no. It's important to Miles. 
Miles, it's what important. does this mean? It means that things are going to get more complicated for me a lot earlier than I originally intended. What does Shaw have to do with that? He's, He's a bigger been piece. playing for a long time. Don't dance around. Look, He's it a has bishop. Miles is a Explain pawn. what it is. I'm We're not playing there. the job. Unfortunately, everyone keeps talking over me. We finally get your beast out a little bit there, bud? Thank you. What I was saying is that the fact that he is a player in the game, he collects boons, as you heard, from Weathers and Elsa and others, and he is gaining power due to this. He is gaining control over others and their actions because of these boons that keeping he collects and takes. And now that I'm in the game, he's going to see me as either a threat or an ally and hasn't decided which yet. But we did threaten him, so probably not everybody's, a great start. Everybody's trying to. You know, if you play the jihad, everybody's trying to claw their way up the tower. There's only room for a few at the top. It's the predator game of predators, essentially. And I think what my Justicar Xavier did was basically to say, I'm not playing anymore. There are bigger things. Except well, by doing that, it's still play playing out. the game to a certain degree. It doesn't sound Maybe. like there's a way out of the game. That is... You're starting to get it. Yeah. It's just being in the structure of the Camarilla? Not, not just the Camarilla everything the the world the it just the politics of the humans the things going on there the it's about control and one person controls everything that person being shaw well shaw would love that shaw would love that shaw's big around here but, but he is a small fish in a gigantic I it, pond i heard it described as a wheel once is it your same poet friend yeah my buddy Kabir, he describes it all as a wheel. The whole world. And when you're on different parts of the wheel, you view it very differently. But it's trying to figure out where the actual power is, and what the wheel is doing, and on what road the, the wheel is turning down. And you want to get as close as you can to be in the hub. And to be very careful about the things that aren't on the wheel, and are very jealous about it. And also not getting caught underneath the wheel and crushed into paste. I think I get it. Probably not, but that's all right. I, yeah. think, I think you know about as much as I do. I mean, none of us are players, except for Miles now. Well, by and definition, now. we're all players, whether we want to be or not. And being that you're closely involved with me, you are. No, I, I get it. I was, I was yeah. trying to give perspective. I right, appreciate the compliment, Wim, but I'm pretty sure I'm a piece. I know you're a tool. A wide smile cracks on his face. I <laughs> lean forward and put a hand up for a high five with Wynn. With everything that we're facing, the Sadites, the Zemichi, is that how you say it? Zemichi. There's, so you're going to find out real quick that none of us know how to pronounce anything Chimichi. the same way. Honestly, Call whatever honestly, you want. I know, kid, this ain't a tradition, but some a word to the wise. Yes? Don't talk about the Sabbat when you're in amongst the Camarilla. They get real, real upset hearing about things like that. It's like going to a fancy dinner party and you're talking about a subject that they turn their nose up to. Except they might uh, do more than just throw you out of the dinner party. No talking about the Sabbat at Elysium. Lots of illusions are allowed, though. The thing, I don't know, has anyone explained to you what an Elysium actually is? We covered some of the brief details earlier tonight, but essentially it is... A neutral zone that is every, no fighting. That's why the weapons were an issue. And everyone comes together and talk. And that's usually where the prince presents himself, makes proclamations. It's, a, it's functionally a demilitarized zone. It is a place where... It's also a tradition that's outside of the Camarilla. The Camarilla are, still, are the only ones that still uphold the Elysiums. But... Anybody's actually allowed, as long as they respect the hospitality being given. So we could be at Elysium and a Sedite could walk in. <laughs> they have. That seems possible, yes. Yeah. And I, they would be under the protections of Elysium until they, they chose to violate it. What they likely do, uh, and has happened in the past, is just try and goad you into breaking Elysium first. They'll insult you, 
they'll threaten you, they'll insinuate. This is not just Settites, this is whoever. As long as they have the power to do so. And if the Settites in the city have pull with uh, the prince. Say anything to get your blood up so that you make the first mistake, because if you violate Elysium, That's you will forfeit and you've lost. That's why I don't come. It's part of the reasons why they are brazen enough to attack in the domain is because they do have enough pull. But nominally, when you are in Elysium, you should not fear harm coming to you. Directly. Physically. You are... You stared down Shaw tonight. It was pretty good. It was a good start. I have no doubt that if someone tries to get your hackles up, you're going to be fine. For now. Mm-hmm. Until they learn where your hackles are. Your, your Thought-provoking as ha- always, Neil. Are, is that what that is? Yeah, the hackles are just a kind of a sign. Until they find where to hit you to get your hackles up. Yes. There you go. Yep. Thank you, Miles. Very good. I appreciate that, but if Shah and the Jihad is another thing that we ought to be handling, the Sadites, the Samichi, uh what do we tackle first? Well, the nights are going to be interesting. I have a monster in my fridge and another in my yard. I feel like that should take some priority. Probably... That seems reasonable. Especially with Feed, those other signs. And get out of, and go outside of the main town would probably be a good I think idea. Our, I think our very first task is to listen to some music and try and make sure that you have a much easier time feeding than last. Do I have to, or can I just... I don't want to hurt anyone again. It would be good if you could learn with all of us here to watch you. Don't worry, kid. I'll, I'll make sure it goes all right. Thank you, Johnny. Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. Britta, the unknown new embrace, was played by Rebecca Steigelfest. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Muirhead. Wind Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez, recording by Rebecca Steigelfest. This episode edited by Rob Muirhead. The music used in this episode was January Grunge Love Fest by Technoax. Visit them online at technoax.com. T-E-K-N-O-X.com. Path of Night uses the 20th Anniversary Edition rule set of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the Storyteller System are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at at Path of Night Pod on Facebook at facebook.com slash pathofnightpodcast, or email us at pathofnightpodcast at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. All of the accommodations for less sunlight-friendly people uh, exist. Less (laughs) sunlight-friendly people. Okay. I was trying to find it's like they might flip out and attack daytime. Yes. <laughs> Dayman is the fighter of the nightman. Look, people that take damage from being Champion in sunlight sun. and or die. And that's that's all people. And eventually. friendship. Cancel for everyone. everyone. Oh my god. I quit this game forever. <laughs> <laughs>